Hey, TNA fans, don't forget, if you enjoyed this week's episode and want to hear the full conversation, including everything else we do, all the bonus content, uh, you can click the green, the big green button on FansTalkTNA.com and pledge a few dollars our way. Every week, the Fans Talk Wrestling team delivers over three hours of content to our podcast feed, including this conversation, and we want to keep that trend going. Every little bit will help. And spread the word. The more support we see come in, the more time we'll devote to sitting down to talk wrestling with you every single week. So let's get into it. From the Fans Talk Wrestling family at fanstalkwrestling.com, this is Fans Talk TNA. It's a weekly conversation about what's going on in the world of TNA and Impact Wrestling. This is episode 20 and was brought to you by the support of listeners just like you. My name is Garvin and I'm once again joined by Nick. Say hello, Nick. I'm doing this podcast standing up because I am standing up for Impact Wrestling. Dude, I am also standing up for Impact Wrestling, literally, and hashtagging it, of course. Uh, tonight, we're going to be recapping and reviewing pretty much everything that took place this week. We'll talk a little bit about hashtag stand up, if it's bringing the benefit that uh, TNA is hoping for, and all that th- that happened this week. So, uh, quick reminder. We do read and respond to all of your comments, so you can post those comments on YouTube, Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. You can also send in topics to questions at ftwpodcast.com and anywhere else using the hashtag AskFTW. Also, definitely visit fanstalkwrestling.com, as well as the rest of our content over on fanstalkwrestling.com, and uh, you can leave a comment there as well. So, let's jump right into this week. Uh, what worked for you, Nick? I was really intrigued by Storm's budding partnership with Bram. Um, there's no immediate affiliation yet. Bram seemed to scoff at the idea. But now that Magnus is back, which I also enjoyed, <clears throat> I can see Bram getting closer with the Revolution, especially now that the Revolution no longer holds the tag titles. I could even see him replacing Abyss. Um, if they decide to draw on that previous storyline of uh, Bram upstaging Abyss at every turn, maybe they'll continue that and have him replace Abyss in the faction, which I think that would drastically improve things. Well, I, I, I agree. I think I think that would make the, the group a little bit more believable, a little bit more uh, worth watching at this point. But at the same time, you know, he doesn't really need them. They don't nec- I mean, they do need him for the, the impact that he does bring. But just the connection is weird. Also, they weren't talking about replacing anyone. It was always there's a room for there's always room for one more. So I I don't see him replacing Abyss if that's the case. I think he'll just join. See the thing, it, if Bram does join, I don't see him and Abyss coexisting, and that that's why I think Bram would replace Abyss because Abyss would complain about Bram being there and. Given the whole "what have you done for me lately" kind of philosophy, the revolution seems to be operating on. Right, uh, Bram seems a lot more successful right now than Abyss does. And on Bram's side of it, if he starts having trouble with Magnus, I can see him going to the revolution for support. Yeah, and and that's true. I mean, he did just lose the 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 tag titles for the revolution. Uh, Blue Hector in the live chat's bringing that up. Uh, so I mean, I I I can see that. Uh, I don't know. To me, just the way the story has gone, I can't see them bringing in Abyss as randomly as they did, only to have him be the first guy that they drop. Well, that could lead to Abyss being Magnus's partner, because Magnus does still have that briefcase. Yeah, but if, but that's the, th- but the thing is, <laughs> uh, Magnus and Abyss also didn't get along. Um, there was, but there was a bunch of problems with them too at the same time. So, you know, for Abyss to not want to team with Bram, even though Bram is joining the revolution, if that's the case, you know, then why would he then team with Magnus? I mean, it just seems, I mean, they're, they're both the, you know, the enemy of, of my enemy is my friend, but at the same yeah. time, it's like they're, it, he's just going from one of that to the other. I I think that would reference the, the time when Abyss was Magnus's heavy, when Magnus paid him and treated him with respect, and that's true. Was his only friend. So. That's true. I forgot about that. I did. I did forget about that. So okay, cool. Um, yeah. I don't know. I I like the idea of Bram joining over, but I just can't see 
Bram joining just, you know, and them dropping Abyss. I think Bram will just be added to that extra piece, but that would add a, a, an interesting dynamic no matter what. Uh, for me, I, I really enjoyed the Spud versus EC3 segment this week. Uh, I think we're finally seeing Spud kind of turn that corner and really show that he's not just a comedic character on the mic. They really can hold his own and give off one of the best promos that we've seen all year. So I was really stoked about what we saw with Spud. Just the chemistry that he has with EC3 as well, uh, I thought I thought was pretty fantastic. Yeah, both of those guys were excellent. I I am completely in agreement with you as far as Spud goes. He's He's been stepping up his game seemingly every week. My favorite part of that was e- was an EC3 contribution when EC3's last line to Spud was, and remember, in this world, the bad guys win. That was just a classic line, and I just loved the idea of him just dropping that and walking away. So I was a little disappointed that Spud came back after that with one more line. But <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah, it, it, it was still such a great segment overall that I, I overlooked that. Yeah, overall, I think I think that was a a, a really good segment. Um, another thing that I noticed this week, and I don't know if I'm alone in this, but I really liked the video packages this week. It seemed like TNA really stepped up their game to build up um, all of their matches, especially the EY video package. So, like when they're building up the main event, um, they did like a little history of Angle. They did a little history of uh, Rude, and then EY. And I thought EY is by far was my favorite. But just in general, the work that they're doing on the video packages is starting to put TNA closer to WWE as far as how they're how they're telling those stories and how they're you know just working those uh, like the, their their video production studio a little harder, which is which is really good to see. Sure, yeah, I'm definitely with you on that. EY's video did more to legitimize him, in my opinion, than a lot of the work he's done recently, yeah. including when he bit open Tommy Dreamer. And that's not to cast aspersions on EY's work thus far. It's just that was a really good video. Yeah, yeah. By far, that that, that one was my favorite. It did put EY like on this other level, which was which is really good to see. Uh, by the way, speaking of EY, if you have an opportunity. Uh, definitely check out EY's uh, podcast interview that he did with Stone Cold this week. Um, I thought that was a really, really cool interview that he did. So a little off topic, but just if, if you guys have a chance, want to hear another podcast, definitely check out Stone Cold's interview with e- with EY this week. Yeah, that's definitely on my list. Um, all right. So what else? What else happened this week that uh, that you liked? I think the other major thing that I liked was Galloway finally speaking out. Drew Galloway specifically. Um, it wasn't necessarily the quality of the of the promo, although I think that was pretty good in itself. But just the idea of somebody stepping up to the BDC, somebody that has really stuck it to the BDC, and. I think this is what Drew McIntyre could have been if they'd stuck with him in the WWE, if they've really given him that push. I think we're seeing a, a, a side of him that I think's been there, but he's really nurtured on the indies, especially in ICW. And I think we're seeing the fruition of that, which really excites me. But aren't you tired of the anti-WWE rhetoric that just about every guy that comes out of WWE has to drop in their first major promo? Like that, this this isn't entertainment. This is wrestling. So he's standing up for wrestling. Like uh, I I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just me, but I'm I'm tired of that being the the go to for everyone. MVP did it. Uh, EC3 did it. Now now Galloway is doing it. Uh, Brodus Clay, I think. Or I'm sorry, Tyrus did it. Um, as far as how they brought him in, they talked more about the wrestling side. So I don't know. I I'm just I wish there was something else. We don't have to attack. WWE every you know every time that we we get like a cast off I I understand what you're saying and on on a certain level I agree with it I I don't like it when that's just all you get from them but if you do it in a in a clever way in a novel way like Galloway was referencing the BDC the entire time yet you knew he wasn't just talking about the BDC so if you can dress it up like that 
I am more okay with it. If you can do something like what EC3 and Tyrus did backstage when they're raging about something or other that Spud's done and all of a sudden Tyrus just looks up and EC3 looks up and the camera tracks up and there's a disco ball and they start talking about the about traumatic effects and the therapy that Tyrus has been going through and I thought that was a clever move. So things like when EC3 does it, he does it in a clever way in a in a unique way I think. So when you can do it like that, I don't really have a problem with it. I enjoy it. Yeah, overall, I mean, I I do agree with you that the BDC, how they have been portraying themselves um, as far as being involved in in that championship title race, like him dropping lines like that the BDC shouldn't be the ones that are determining who is champion every week, that it should be up to, you know, the fans to put the guys that they like in that spot. Um, I, I definitely I definitely do like that. But there's just too many undertones that are that are aimed at. You know the the way that his his WWE career died. Yeah, to be fair, this is for a a somewhat new audience. Now that they're on um, Discovery America, like some people may not have been exposed to all those those references that we're referring to. So uh, Drew Galloway, he did he did debut this week as far as in ring as well. So Drew Galloway versus Kenny King defeated him. What what did you think about that match? Do you think that match was a good start for his career? I think it was a decent match. Um, I don't – it wasn't necessarily the best. I think there may have been some chemistry issues. Um, I think the foundation is there for a good career here. It's just – it wasn't the best match, but it was definitely a solid match. Yeah, I think I think it definitely added to their – overall storyline um you know and it did show that drew uh worked ro- worked really well in the ring um before we get into what what we didn't like we did get a question from uh amandeep on google plus i just want to touch real quick on but it's the idea of you know another guy from wwe that is entered into tna for the first time and um is put into like a major storyline and being able to go over on you know, generally top story level talent like Kenny King. So do you, do you think that TNA made a mistake by bringing Drew Galloway in like this and having him go over Kenny King? No. As far as who he went over, Kenny King's been jobbing for basically the majority of the time he's been in TNA, it, which disappoints me on one hand because he is a truly talented athlete. But then on the other hand, yeah, it's, it's just he he's not a high ranked guy, and I think his overall ability, specifically on the mic, uh, speaks to that. So if it was somebody like MVP himself or a well established guy like like Joe or even Low Key who has all the history, I think maybe I'd feel differently. Sure. But Kenny King is definitely the lowest guy on the totem pole. So if Galloway is going after the BDC, I think that was a logical target. Yeah. As far well, as far as Galloway versus the BDC, I I get the general sentiment that I'm a deep's coming from, like TNA highlighting ex WWE guys at the expense of their own talent, and that's the key phrase at the expense of their own talent. I think is the main issue here, which I don't think is the case. Well, but also you know Drew in WWE was a jobber level talent, <laughs> so now he's going over at like you know a, a relatively top mid Carter. I guess I guess we can call Kenny King. Um, I I dispute the the height of the mid card, but yeah, basically. Sure, sure. All right. Well, we're we're gonna talk a little bit more about this on the main show on FTW two fifty seven. So definitely check that out if you want to hear the full conversation, which we'll have Joe involved as well. Uh, but yeah, I, I I do see the sentiment. I know there are a lot of fans that are kind of disappointed that we're getting another former WWE guy. And pushed um, in, in in a in a capacity that that he's being pushed in. So, but at the same time, uh, you know, as a WWE fan, seeing Drew finally given that opportunity to really shine, um, I think is is nice. It's nice to finally see him get this shot. And yeah, just like you, I think I think he's overall doing very well in this capacity. But let's talk about what didn't work this week. What did you not like about this week's impact? I was not a fan 
of how the knockouts tile match went down. And I've been beating this over and over again as the weeks go by about how I'm not really a fan of the, the storyline here, the, the way they're executing it, at least. I like the fact that Terrence standing up to Kong. I like the fact that Kong's going after the title. I don't really like how they've dragged it out with this DQ finish, and I don't like that Gale keeps getting involved. If if Gale and Kong want to go at it, it say they feud for a little bit while Terran recovers, then that's that's great. Determine a number one contender and then challenge for the title and end it definitively. I just don't like how Terran is being made into sort of this afterthought here. They keep referencing the long history between Gale and Kong, and it's it's not doing anything for Terran. Yeah, what what about the history that Terran is trying to set here? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I get you. Yeah, I, I I agree for the most part, and you know we we talked a bit about this last week as far as you know, do you need Gale Kim to be involved in this feud to make it feel more important? And at the time last week, we had reservations that you know that would just muddy it up. And make it less about Terran. And we're seeing that right now. We're seeing Terran not really being given the full, uh, you know, the full spotlight. And instead, the major story is Gail Kim coming out after Kong, uh, to basically not only save Terran from continuing to get beaten down, but to basically, you know, continue their historic feud. And I'm not, I'm not ready for that. I want to see what Terran can do. Just like you, and I think I think it is a shame that we're not that we're not getting that opportunity to see it. Yeah, the one bit that I'm okay with for Gail being involved at all is when she came out to warn Taryn about taking on Kong. Oh, totally. Yeah, that was and, a good segment. Yeah, I, that gets into an area where we voice um, dissatisfaction about how the veteran coming out and warning everybody about to go into this big heavy main event. It, how it jacks you up for life, how cliche that's gotten. But I think that's less of an issue here. It's it's not somebody just being trotted out for that specific purpose, like a Mick Foley or, right. or somebody like that, or a Tommy Dreamer if we want to get into TNA continuity. So th- I that part, at least, was okay. Okay. Uh, for me, the, the one major thing that I didn't like was the quick title change between the Wolves and um the revolution you know my my complaint about the revolution is we really haven't been able to get that story of why abyss is there you know obviously abyss is the stronger of the three that they have that you know for for some reason james storm didn't believe enough in what he was doing for sonata and uh manix so that he had to bring in abyss to carry this these 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 titles with him but we really haven't seen abyss do much and it's it's i don't know i think it's just a missed opportunity for tna to really tell that story now we're getting the wolves they have the title again um and and it really seemed like we never lost like they never lost that spotlight the spotlight has always seemingly been on the wolves or the hardys and what's going on with the hardys so i don't know i just think it's a missed opportunity to not just take the titles off of storm and abyss as quickly as they did but just the fact that that they really haven't told that story or that effective of the story yet yeah i i completely agree with that i i'm not really sure whether putting the belts back on the wolves is a bad idea or a good idea at this point because like you said the revolution hasn't really done anything with them and we haven't seen why abyss was chosen as storm's tag team partner yeah, there's the obvious reasons. He's big, he's dominant in kayfabe, and he's a monster. But it seems like every time he's in a match, he's getting jobbed out to somebody. So, yeah, I I think that was a mistake on TNA's part, and hopefully it'll be resolved moving forward. But yeah, yeah, it, it's just been kind of a wash. Well, and they really haven't done anything to really push the 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 division. I mean, they it was mostly a Wolves, Hardys, and and Revolution, but Revolution was, you know, going after the Hardys, so they took, you know, Jeff Hardy out, and then after that, I mean, there really aren't any other quality tag teams as far as how how their stories have been told on air, so, um, yeah, I, I don't know, I think 
overall, the entire tag team division is a missed opportunity for TNA to really, you know, just looking back to the end of the year, the, the fantastic story that they told with 3D and the Hardys and the Wolves. And then now this, it seems like, I don't know, like they're just on the back burner, but at least they're getting TV time, unlike the X division. So I don't know. I can't complain yeah. too much, but, uh, okay. Hashtag, uh, stand up for wrestling. Um, I don't know if you followed any of the tweets that were going in, but your your thoughts on on this little social media campaign that TNA uh, has been on? I thought it was neat. I I thought it was neat that they gave Drew Galloway the controls, or at least they said they did for three days. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was neat them retweeting all of the fans' suggestions, which were basically a lot of the things we've been saying, which is give the D. De- or the knockouts more TV time, or the X division more time, or the tag tiles more time. Yeah, I I think it's been a pretty neat move. Will anything come of it? Maybe, maybe not. TNA has kind of a mixed track record when it comes to this sort of thing. But yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful. Yeah, I can't say that I followed this all all you know last couple of days. Um, I went through a period where I didn't have a phone, <laughs> and that's like usually my like main device. So. Um, yeah, I really haven't been following Twitter, but what I have followed, um, as far as just popping up every once in a while throughout the day, um, it's been more, more or less complaints that we've already had a- about TNA and what TNA has done, such as, you know, um, give more time to the knockouts or, um, give more time for the tag team division or bring back the X division. Where's the X division? Why hasn't it been on TV for six weeks, eight weeks or however long it's been? So. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it's really effective. I mean, obviously they're, they're getting, uh, a response, a good response, but at the same time, it's like we're, we as fans seem to be harping on the same issues over and over again, as far as, you know, that the, the, there's just not enough time <laughs> for, for everything that we want to see in, but we definitely want to see the X division. So I don't know. I think I think I think only time will tell if this will actually mean something. So I mean, because if you look back, the last time that they asked a question, which was should they bring back the six sided ring, um, that obviously got uh, approved. Uh, the fans were were totally behind it. So, uh, but that still took a couple weeks, maybe maybe a month and a half before we finally saw it take place. So, um, mm. we'll see. We'll see what happens. So uh, this week we got qu- quite a few things that have been already announced as far as what we will see. Uh, we've got EY versus Rude in the last man standing match, EC3 versus Spud in a hair versus hair match, and Lashley versus Angle for the World Heavyweight Championship. Um, overall, what are you most looking forward to? I'm looking forward most to the probable main event, the world title match. They've made a big deal about this never having been done before. These two guys have never faced off, which just boggles my mind. I, I would have I would have thought they'd have faced off at least once in WWE. But, yeah, this match really excites me, and that's not something I would have said maybe a month or two months ago. I, I simply wouldn't have thought it possible. Um, I am excited to see what I'm guessing will be the resolution of the EC3 Spud feud. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what I'll think about EC3... Having a shaved head? Well, I assume that's how it's going to go down. Spud. Spud could have a shaved head. Uh, possibly. I- I'm betting on EC3 personally. Um, but yeah, that, that should be a good match, given the quality of work we've been seeing out of Spud lately. I'm not excited at all about EY versus Rude. I think this feud should have been done back the first time Rude beat EY. I've said it before, and I, I guess I'll say it again. So I hope this is a feud ender. It's a last man standing match. It should be a feud ender. I hope this doesn't go through all the different gimmick, gimmick matches that Rude versus Storm did. Um, especially with the specter of that non ending, but I guess we'll see. Yeah. And you listening, let us know what, what you think as well, what you're most looking forward to. Um, I, I, I see benefits out of all three of these things, but again, I would love to see more of X division. I'd love to see more of a lot of different things. Um, I'm with mm-hmm. you. I'm with you, Nick. Uh, as far as EY versus rude, I'm ready for this to be over. I'm ready for this to be over, but at the same time, they, they always put on good matches. So I'm looking forward to the match, but the story, yeah, I'm ready for the story to move on. 
All right, so don't forget, you can become a paid member of the FTW community by going to fanstalktna.com and clicking the big green button. Because of your help, we're finally getting the podcast in a spot where it is becoming self-sufficient uh, as far as financially goes. So we're going to be able to start upgrading equipment and all that good stuff. Um, but we're also releasing some bonus content for you guys. Every milestone we reach, we're going to release a new audio track. Uh, or something, you know, we're still, we're still developing what those milestones are going to be. So, uh, definitely help us again, fanstalktna.com, click the big green button and pledge a few dollars our way. Uh, thank you for listening on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, or however you listen. And if you listen through a service that lets you leave ratings and reviews like Stitcher and iTunes, please let people know that they should listen to Fans Talk TNA and the FTW podcast. And when you watch this week's Impact, please make sure to mention us in your conversation on Twitter, G+, and Facebook. We want to hear what you guys thought of the show. We'll see you guys next week.